Welcome to this uh, next instalment of our Moho Crochet Long Hexagon. Right, so, so far we should have two things that look a little bit like this. Sort of a cardigan, but mm, be quite difficult to wear and there's no room for your head to come through. Um, so, what we're going to do now is look at what we do next. Now, before we do this, what I want you to do is lay your two pieces out and I want you to take two stitch markers and I just want you to put a stitch marker somewhere here and somewhere here so this is going to remind us that these are our fronts because what can sometimes happen when we come to either do the back extensions or we come to join them together we can get a little bit confused and i've known people do a back extension on this side and a back extension on that side and then when they try and put them together you have a somewhat unwearable cardigan you could always flip it flip one half inside out but then your seams would be the other way around so the best thing to do is to pop yourself just a little stitch marker on the front there and they're always going to be uh, your fronts when we come to work on the next bits right so from this point here we have got four possible options and depending on which option you're going for depends which part of the video you need to watch or whether you just turn it off completely so option number one is that you are going for the balloon sleeve without a hood so balloon sleeve and no hood that means that so far you should have two hexagons which are joined at the top but which also the bottom edge along here is your desired chest width that you wrote down on that um on that handout so if i were if my desired chest width was 45 <laughs> i would be perfect here all right so that is oh i'll just chuck my tape measure on the floor it's probably having a ball tape measure isn't it um so that is scenario number one balloon sleeves and no hood you should have two things that look like this that well that plus that should equal your desired chest width if that is the scenario and the situation that you are in turn this video off wait for the next one bye bye <laughs> scenario number two is if you are doing the balloon sleeve and you are adding a hood now if that is the case so we should have again i should we should have the desired chest width across the bottom there but when you join it together you should have not joined the first four grannies along here so this part here of your seam that should be open this can be joined and this will be a nice little flappy flap all right so for roughly 10 centimeters that might be a little bit more but if it's um it's a bit bigger it's not a problem we can always cinch it together afterwards so we should have two of these with an opening at the top if you are doing the balloon sleeve with a hood if you are doing that again turn this video off wait for the next one we'll see you soon bye bye scenario number three is if you are uh, if you've got your sleeve width to the desired sleeve width but you need to keep increasing this bit to get that up to your desired chest width and you are not adding a hood so the first part this next bit that i'm going to show you is for people who are not adding a hood no hood okay right so in that case then we will need our hook and our yarn now i'm going to do each bit of this cardigan in a separate color so it'll look a bit crazy uh, but you'll be able to see how each one builds up and how it contributes to the overall design. So I'm going to move on to a lovely mustard here. All right. So let's uh, get set, have a little zoom in and we'll get going. If you're working with plain yarn, uh, with a solid colour yarn like this, and this is where you fastened off, then you can just start here again. Don't, don't bother fastening off, just carry on. That's where the end of your round is. You can work round. If you're working with variegated yarn and you find yourself that you'd finish your last round down here again carry on from there if you're working with variegated yarn and you find yourself on this end here you're going to need to fasten it off and rejoin down where the rest of your, your join is where your side seam was there okay if you have fastened off and um if you are uh, changing colour or anything like I'm doing if you have fastened off I would always recommend that you restart in a corner space because it just gives you a little bit more um, leeway to sew your ends in easier so I'm going to start down here now I need to find as well the side that I should be working on because we, we still need to maintain that we're turning on each side so we look here I want this side where I can see 
the the holes where I can see the backs of the stitches I don't want to be able to see the V's along the top of the stitch I want this side facing me so I'm going to be working this way okay so I'm going to join down in this corner space down here uh, so we're going to just be working around these three sides one two three and it's fairly straightforward it's just continuing in the granny pattern the only thing we need to look out for is when we get up to this bit up here so let's lace up now i don't use any uh slip knot or anything like that when i'm joining my yarns onto uh, my crochet work because i think if you use a knot in crochet you can definitely feel it and um i don't want to feel knots but follow your heart so i lace myself up i put my hook through my corner space pull it through and then i do my two chain one two and if i hold my tail around level with my chain and i work over it i'm already crocheting it in so the pattern's exactly the same it's still going to be my three trebles two chain three trebles into a corner space so that's three two chain and three trebles one and two and three there and then I'm going to work all the way up this edge until I get to here. Just doing same as I was before, same pattern, three trebles, three trebles, three trebles in every space. So I will uh, speed this up and you don't have to watch me get up there and I will see you at the end. Right, so I've worked up this side now and I've got to this, here's my seam, right? You can see there's my seam of my two shoulder seams. So what I don't want to do is put three trebles in this corner space and three trebles in this corner space, because that would be an increase and it would start to fan out a little bit and I don't need that. So what I want to do is to just work three trebles evenly across these two spaces. So this is how we do that decrease. And this is also the decrease that you'll do if you're doing your tapered sleeves later on. Um, so what we do is we go, one treble in the first space so the next treble is going to span the two of these so we're going to do decrease two trebles together starting in this hole finishing in this hole so that's wrap through there and round and through two leaving my two loops on my hook wrap in the next space through round and through the first two giving me my two unfinished trebles on there and my working loop so then when I've got the three loops, I wrap and I pull through all three and then I do another final treble into that second space. So you can see I've got first treble, decrease two together, final treble. So it will only work out the same width as all of the others, but it is more evenly distributed. Um, you can do two in one and one in the other, but it just looks a bit clunky and because it's right on top of your shoulder, it can be visible. So that is how we get across that first one. We do one decrease two together and two in the end you only have to do this once because after that we will be going in here for the next round and in this space we don't work in the space between them so then all we do is you carry on going round so it's just going to be three trebles into every space until you come to the corner space in which case what do we do that's right three trebles two chains three trebles so i'll get back round to the join and then we'll have a see what that looks like so i'll see you there Right, so I've gone all the way around and I'm back to my final uh, space here. So I'm just going to do exactly the same as I was doing on my hexagon. I would do my slip stitch, two chain, turn and carry on. And what you will do is you carry on working around these three sides until you reach your desired chest width across here. So the measurement I'm working to is 59. Um, so I would go until I measure um, half of 59 which is 29.5. Now, if, because with chunky, if you're working in quite a chunky yarn like me, one row will be, well, I've got about a centimetre and a half for one row here. So if another row will push you over, go for the smaller size. So go for like the row less. So say I got to a point where I was at like 28 and a half centimetres. So I was here. Um, and another row is going to push me over then just leave the last one because of the nature of crochet and the nature of um this pattern there's there's loads of wiggle room in it anyway so go slightly under your measurements as opposed to working over them okay so if you are doing the um straight sleeve or tapered sleeve and we're just adding the chest width and you're not adding a hood this is what you would keep going round until you've got your desired chest width across there ignore this width now we don't care about the sleeve width anymore 
so we'd go to there and then you wait for the next video well you would do the same on the other side as well so the next scenario is if you are doing if you've achieved you've achieved your desired sleeve width and you do want to add a hood okay so let's have a look how we do that right so we want to add a hood um so we don't what we need a bit of an opening here okay so we can't just add the chest width around the same as the last way and um, because we're going to need somewhere for our head to come out and our hood to be able to um allow our head to get in it so it's going to be very very similar but just ever so slightly different so we're going to be starting at the top here but we're not going to join these rounds so what you want to do is you want to find the way that we're going to be working so i can see my v's on this side the top of the stitches are on this side so i'm going to be working through that side where i can see these nice holes in the top of the stitch where i would normally work if i was working into them and what we're going to do is we're going to start in the the corner space of the side in the direction that we're going so again when i am crocheting i don't start with a slip knot or anything i just lace myself up put my hook through the corner space here and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do two chains and that counts as my first treble and i'm going to hold this along here right now i've got i'm going to start this is just going to be my first stitch i only want one in this first space there and then i'm going to start straight in this next one so i just have my chain in that one and then i'm going to go into three trebles into this one and i'm just going to follow on in the pattern all the way around doing three trebles in each space until i come to a corner space down here in which case i will do my usual three trebles two chains three trebles all along the bottom just three trebles in each space and then three trebles two chains three trebles in each corner space um, until I get back up here and then we will have a look at how we finish that round so I'll see you down at the corner space and then I'll, I'll meet you back at the end all right see you in a bit right so I've gone all the way down that first side here and I've come to my first corner space at the bottom front so what I'm going to do is the same as like I would have done before three trebles two chains three trebles in my corner space then all the way along the bottom same in the next corner space up to the other side so I'll see you when I'm back there right so I've now gone all the way around you can see I came down here corner corner come back up and I'm here and I'm back at the last space now what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be basically using the granny stripe pattern so when we're doing grannies we're technically now we're working in rows so we don't want every row to begin and end with your three trebles because then you'll just keep increasing so if we start with one treble or the equivalent of one treble we must finish with the equivalent of one treble so all i'm going to do so into that space just on the other side so it's not the same corner space as that one it's the space there just on the other side of it on the other side of the shoulder seam i'm going to finish with one treble okay and so this is going to provide my opening for my hood now if when we come to it and this opening is a little bit wide we can always join it up afterwards but we can't open it so that's why we're working it like this so the granny stripe pattern says that if we begin and end with one treble or the equivalent of on row one row two is going to begin and end with the equivalent of three trebles so we do our two chain and we turn and then into this space at the base of the turning chain there so i've got my turning chain i do me two more trebles so that's one and two so that counts as starting my row with three trebles so i went i had one on the row below so i know that this is going to be three and this will just alternate one three one three one three all the way along so i'm going to work all the way around now in exactly the same pattern three trebles three trebles three two three in my corner spaces until i get back round to there so i will see you there and uh, we'll see how we're looking then all right so i've got all the way around now and i'm back here to my last space so this is my last space that i'm going to work into and i'm gonna i've got one on the row below so this must be a row that finishes with three so i do me one two and three trebles and I do not join it to that because this is where my hood's going to join on. So I carry on then. So I'm going to carry on doing that. So again, so the next row, that was that row started and ended with one. 
this was three so the next roll will be the equivalent of one so i'll just do my two chain and then start into this one here in your second space if you're looking for the written instructions you've got it on granny stripe pattern it's also the same as the bottom extension rows just ignore the bit where it says if not in already in one of the corner spaces because we're, we're joining in a specific space up here so i would carry on doing that until i reach my desired chest width so let's see my desired chest width is 29 and a half so i've got i want another about, um, about another six centimeters don't I? So if I go to the, how many rows is that looking? One, two, three, four rows. So I need another four rows of that on there until I have reached my desired chest width. So I would do that on here. Then I would do exactly the same on the other side. Now yours, if you're not changing colour, yours might not be as easy to um, differentiate how many rows you've done as mine is so what i would recommend is just keep a little tally of how many rows you're doing and keep your notes there's uh, there's plenty of space on your where are we here <laughs> well, my hand out's seen better days and i've bit the corner off um so here so you join your shoulders in so you could put a little tick there for how many extension rows how many additional rounds you're working on so that when you come back to it you've got all the information that you need on there all right so once you've got those two, then it's time for our back extension rows and that will be in our next video. So as ever, give us a shout if you've got any questions, uh, anything that you need. If you're not sure of anything, just check. Um, a more reliable way to measure, I will say, is to go along the whole piece like that and just give it like a bit of a, a flip around before you measure it because it does sort of tend to give a little bit. So we carry on going until we hit that. All right. So thank you very much for joining me. We will see you in our next instalment very soon. Bye-bye. It's crafting time again. What's that? You don't know how to craft? Well, it's simple. You just let mom...